Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another First Division review show. I suppose the last show uh, of this stage of the season. And uh, Keith is a happy man because not only did Bray get their first win at the Carlisle of the season, they scored three goals. Bray Wanderers three at Lone Town nil at the Carlisle. Two goals from that man, Daryl Lynch, and Rob Manley in 73. So the strikers were scoring the goals as well, which was great to see, Keith. Uh, Clifford was back, I believe. Am I right? He was back, yeah. He was warming up. Um, he wasn't in the squad though but he was doing a bit of ball work before the game so um, that's only positive I suppose yeah I wouldn't say the only positive but it's great to get a win from Bray and uh, all of a sudden they're only three points behind Trishy despite having a bad start to the season first half of the season so they'd be delighted with that aspect of it and you know we did warn that you know this would be typical Bray <laughs> at Lone with the first game of the season at the Carlisle and uh, you know in the end it was um would you say it was comfortable as the scoreline suggested? Yeah, it would, Keith, to be honest. Um, it wasn't It wasn't as if Bray, like, Bray had chances. That was, that, was, that was another positive from the game. They actually created chances and they scored three goals. So I have to say, Keith, Callum Thompson was absolutely amazing on the right-hand side for Bray. And he gave, gave Derek Daly an absolute nightmare of a game, uh, all game. Um, Darryl Lynch obviously getting the two goals. It's key for strikers, obviously, to get on the score sheet, you know, because we can't be relying on uh, Curtis Bourne. He was our top goal scorer before Darryl got the two goals the other night. So Darryl's mm. now overtaking him, I believe. So um, I know, I know. Because he's only played about three or four matches, hasn't he? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So look, um, the the only downfall from that is Darryl seemed to get injured. What, um, Whilst he was celebrating the second goal, Rob Manley came off the bench and he got his goal. So, again, mm. and I said it weeks ago, after Manley scored against Longford, hopefully that kicks him on. It didn't. Hopefully this kicks him on because we've tough L games coming up, you know. Mm. I have to say, Keith, though, at long, no wonder they have two points. They are absolutely atrocious. They really are. Um I know there's not a lot of probably at long town fans that watch this, that, this show. So There's I'm always probably- one or two. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably safe enough to say like there's some teams in the Leinster Senior League that would beat that Atlanta there really is um, what, what's the problem Keith like I mean apart from the fact that they're bottom of the league after 16 games and two points and no wins what's their from seeing them like live live you know what I mean what do you think their biggest issue is because we've often talked about they do have decent attacking threats they don't seem to play together as a team Keith mm. It's mm-hmm. it seems to be a lot of individuals, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, Alou Alou got the ball and he ran up the line, and it was Zane who got the ball, he ran up the line, so they were using their pace a bit. Macaulay, Macaulay, you know, it's it's a shame to see Glenn Macaulay because what a talent he was, you know, and you know, not that he's lost it, he just he just looked disinterested. Has he got the desire, Keith? I've always wondered that about Glenn. Now he could say. If he was watching this, he could be t- saying we're talking a lot of nonsense, but it just looks like to me when he plays that he hasn't got the desire because he's better ability than he's been showing him for years. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, he's played, he played, he didn't go to Liverpool for nothing, you know. So obviously, he came home and did he go to Pats first? Yeah. And, and then Bohemians, you know. So I know he's, he's he playing down the lower echelons of the, of the, of the, they were in the first division, you know. So and to I be mean, honest, Keith, when Pat brought him in, it was a big deal. Seen as a big deal as well. Yeah, I, when I when I heard he was coming home, I was like, "Wow, that's a huge," you know. But you know, maybe he just needs an arm around the shoulder. You know, a lot of players do, and you know, mm. maybe he just needs someone to 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 cozy up to him and say, "Tell him how good he is," because he is he is a talented individual. Um, mm. But I'll be honest with you, Keith, on their performance, you know, I can't see Atlong getting many more points this season. You know, they might grab a draw or maybe a small victory off of Cove, but other teams, you know, um, can I just also say, Keith, the, the, the fans the other night were absolutely excellent for Bray. Um, they didn't stop singing for 90 minutes, you know, and uh, obviously just being a, a, a few bits and pieces problem-wise in the Carlisle this season uh, with fans and away fans. So uh, fair play to them, you know. As you said at the start, 3-0 win. You're happy enough. It's your first home win the season, so... Uh, We'll take it because our next three games are tough. Yeah, exactly. Cove Ramblers two, Longford Town four, and uh, 
Roy Keane was attending in attendance here, and he must have been delighted to see six goals. No doubt he wasn't happy with the defending, I'm sure. But uh, Phillips scored twi- uh, scored for Cove. Hegarty also scored. Elwardy scored twice, including the penalty. Uh, Magnerson, which was good to see because he's had terrible injury problems. He was at Bowles previously, and Robinson, who um, you know, is a midfielder. You're you're a big fan of actually at Longford yeah. Town, isn't that right? So look, a good result for Longford Town. Back and winning ways. Uh, Four points behind Waterford. Um, it looks like they're going to be at the halfway stage. Like they're now nine points ahead of Treaty. So look, they're in a good position. They'd be happy to get the four goals. And once again, a game where goals, where Cove are involved in goals, but coming out, out on the wrong side of a, a high-scoring game. That seems to be the issue there. Yeah, yeah. Um, just looking earlier, that's um, like the Cove. Poor old Cove. They've one win in, in twelve now. Um, but earlier on in the season, they seem to be holding teams. But now they're mm. shipping gold. They're just mm. shipping gold weekly, you know. And it's definitely a worry. Um, I know. I'm not sure what the the injury um, status is of uh, Brian Whitmarsh and uh, Drynan. Drynan wasn't in the squad. Brian Whitmarsh mm. uh, was on the bench. So, but uh, yeah, young Pierce Phillips opened the scoring, and you know, from there, you Kobe be helping to kick on, and then. Obviously, Longford equalised with the penalty. Um, I know, I know when it was live, it was Dylan Burnett that was credited with the goal. Uh, I haven't seen the penalty, but then I seen mm. it was Shane already that um, and Shane Shane then got doubled doubled his tally for the day in the second half. Uh, we discussed this already with Longford. Um, you might notice there was one less sub on the bench for Longford, so their squad is seems to be struggling. And Joe Doyle uh, went off injured in the first half for uh, Magnuson, and Dennison went off a half time injured. I, I, I'm presuming he was injured because Lee Stacey came off the bench. So you know that's that's another two players that have been injured. Um, and uh, Gary Gary will probably have to draft in a couple of the academy players. You would think you probably look to bring in a couple of more players in the off season. Like it's I know it's a delicate situation because you look along for and say you'd be confident that they're going to, with no more new players coming in, that they're going to finish the playoffs. But if they want an opportunity to get up through the playoffs, they probably need to make one or two key signs. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's what they probably have to do if they have any chance of getting up. But do you, do you kind of go to try and go up and take a chance? And then if you don't, what happens then? It's a very messy situation, particularly in the position they're in, unlike Waterford or God or even Cork, if they finish outside first, at least they have that professional setup and they have the squads as we speak compared to Longford. I don't know what the policy Longford have. Yeah. Certainly Gary Cronin, when he was with Bray, he was a uh, shrewd signings, um, a, a few shrewd loan signings. Like in his first season, mm-hmm. he had Dina Halloran, um, who seems to have just dropped off the face of the earth. Uh, his second season, he had John Martin, who's obviously gone on to Dundalk now. And um, last season, yeah, Andrew Quinn at the back. Um, so mm. he's a couple of players that mm. have have gone on to do well in the league, you know. Um, I, as I say, mate, I don't know what Longford's budget is like, um, but you definitely with with the injuries they seem to have picked up. You definitely be if you're a Longford fan, be hoping that they bring a couple more in just to kind of shore up the squad a little bit because. Mm. Any more injuries, and you're looking at 14 man squad, 15 man squad, and that's not good. Mm. And, and only that case, you're look, you're looking probably to play players with knocks, which is never good either. Sorry, you didn't catch that. Sometimes then you're looking for players that are playing with knocks as well, and you kind of have to play them almost, and that's something that's not ideal. Yeah, absolutely. Like we had it a couple of times with Bray last season. We we mm. had to we had to play players with knocks, and it doesn't work out, you know, because you might get. 20, 25 minutes out of them. And like, if if you're a talented player, you want your talented players on the pitch for 90 minutes. So you'd almost rather give them the couple of weeks rest and get them back into full fitness. Um, Longford, just on, on where they are in the league, they're obviously going to finish in the playoffs, but they're probably, I think it's the four behind Waterford now, are they? Yeah, they uh, are. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's funny. We'll discuss Waterford in a second, but like mm. if, if Longford can get a bit of a run going, maybe they can, uh, maybe they can chance for tour, but certainly not first or second. Yeah, finally in Cove, um, obviously seven points off Bray now. They're seven points out of that loan, but you can see the same amount of goals as that loan now, which yeah. is disappointing. And I, that's very disappointing. But 
one of the things I think we probably haven't really touched on, but losing Charlie Lyons to Galway, I think it was a big loss to them as well. Look, players of that are going to be a massive loss to Colvin, very hard to replace yeah. because for such a young player, he was very good at organising the defence as well. So that's a major loss for them as well, to be fair, isn't it? But, um, 39 goals if they succeeded, isn't it? That, yeah, along with that loan, both in 39 yeah. goals. Like, and, you know, that's disappointing from their point of view. But we'll move on to Waterford, as you mentioned there. And look, they're flying at the moment, aren't they? 4 0, they won't want to break at all. 4 0 win against Treaty, Britain. Idawu, Griffin and Kavanagh. That said, nil-nil at half time, but Britain's goal early in the second half. Uh, and actually, do you know what? They'll be happy that Patterson didn't score in the 1-4-0, I think, to be honest. Because it's good when you get others in the score sheet as well and your main marksman, let's say, uh, doesn't score. But another fantastic win for them. I think that's six wins in the bounce now, isn't it, for Waterford as well? So, uh, brilliant for them. Treaty, their form has been very dodgy. Some bad defeats, conceding a lot of goals, very uncharacteristic and... Uh, it's funny because you're talking how bad a season Bray were having and only a few weeks ago, Treaty were doing well again. We're three points between Treaty and Bray in the table. It's crazy how it works, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's funny. Bray's, Bray's win the other night made it one win in 11, I think it was. Uh, Treaty are gone 10 games, only one win. So mm. it's mad. And, and Cover on a similar run. So, like, mm. look... I, I have my notes that I'm surprised Parson wasn't on the score sheet, you know, um, because he's always on the score sheet and we've all already said it halfway, during, halfway through the season. He's probably going to be the first division player of the year. Um, great win for Waterford. Like, nil all at half time, they might have been a bit concerned. Mm. Um, I haven't seen the highlights. I've seen one of the goals because there wasn't any highlights package that I could see. But um, Britain, Britain's first goal was a tap in. Um, mm. That's what he does though. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a typical striker's goal, isn't it? You know, mm. you know, just feed off scraps, and you know, you have to be there to put the ball in it. And um, he was, you know, so and that kind of set Waterford up then, and they got three more goals in the night, uh, four 0 win, and they're only look, they're six points behind Galway. You know, it's 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 a funny old season. It's a funny old season. Um, I'm not like, going to I mean, lie. I think it'd be fantastic if they could really get themselves a month. Could you imagine a three-horse actual title race? It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? But uh, you're right, though. There's seven points behind Cork, six behind uh, Galway. The only problem is they've won six in a row, and you do feel like it's very difficult to keep that winning streak going. Um, but they have to, they're either going to go slightly further behind, right? Or they'll probably get slightly closer. And depending on what happens there might determine where they kind of end up in the scheme of things. So that's going to be interesting. The next few weeks, though, I will say this, the game against Cork was postponed. So yeah. they've got Bray and Athlone. You'd like to think they'd fancy picking up six points there. And oh, yeah. Cork or Galway could drop points in the meantime. The thing Play is, game on. the break is probably coming at a bad time for them. They have mm. six wins in a row. And then, obviously, the Cork game was postponed. Is that because of under-21 call-ups? David Harrington, okay. yeah. Mm. And then... And then they don't play Bray until the twenty fourth, so that's that's a, that's three weeks out. Four weeks is going to be is it three weeks? So they've no game for three weeks. You but know? it would have been rough, roughly four weeks from Friday, really, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Know, so but... uh, Gary Hunt will have to keep them on their toes, you know. Um, but mm. look, if you're looking, if you're a Waterford fan, you can't, you wouldn't maybe pick two, probably. Um, the games that if you were selecting the game, it would be what mm. it would be Waterford against Bray on the first game back or mm. at long because of the foot. Not like I'm a Bray fan, obviously, you know. Like, mm. I mean, but are, I are they say- better off? I think they're better off having the court game postponed in many ways because of that reason. It gives them an opportunity to get six points and maybe Poss- close the gap in the meantime. Possibly, possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, they'll beat that loan. Uh, Bray went down there earlier in the season, only lost one nil, but it was kind of back mm. to the wall. So, um, Waterford, like, I mean, as I said, six wins on the trot, but they've only conceded, mm. what's crucial is they've only conceded three goals in those six games. So, obviously, Killian Cantwell and, and, and Eddie Nolan, they've formed a formidable partnership at the back for Waterford. So, if they can keep the ball out of their net, they have the players going forward. And um, at the moment, they they just seem to be steamrolling teams. Um 4-0 and then 4-2 last week so they're, they're really scoring and they're really getting on the score sheet yeah and finally uh, the big game of the weekend finished Galway United nil Cork City won Matt Healy on 18 minutes it's four goal of the season and uh, I'm pretty certain they're all from outside the box 
uh, maybe a Cork fan or even Gavin could tell me, but uh, they seem to be all bangers. This one was a really good goal because, okay, he picks it up and he's a little bit of space, but he hasn't got an awful lot of space. The Galway players do charge him down relatively quickly and he picks out a brilliant strike into the, the far corner, an unbelievable goal. And we spoke on the show last week. We felt that this is a great opportunity for Galway maybe to go five clear. And we felt that Galway had made a little bit of a statement maybe the last few weeks, getting back on top without maybe playing throughout the season as well as Cork have throughout the season. They have in the last few weeks. But this has really been, like, this is a massive result for Cork because it proves that they have the metal as well, doesn't it? I mean, they went to Galway, and judging by that for I've seen, fully deserved the win. Uh, Galway had one very good chance. I think Waru forced a good save from Harrington yeah. and it cleared off the line maybe then at the end. But, but Cork seemed to do most of the kind of running, didn't they, in the game? And... Uh, they got revenge, obviously, for the defeat of Turner's Cross against Galway. And uh, I think it's a massive statement from Cork because I think both teams are going to be making statements from now to the end of the season, which is exciting because they're both as good as each other in different ways, but they both seem to have bottled. And I think um, Galway proved it bottled. And I think Cork now really proved it by going there and getting the win because consequences more so for Cork losing, I think, were huge personally. And um, one thing I want to say as well quickly, an attendance of over 4,000 the first of each match. I mean, like, what do you say about that? That's unreal, isn't it? Like, what do you say about that? Yeah, obviously, like, if it was in Turner's Cross, you'd kind of expect that with Cork on so well, but it was the reverse, obviously. I was yeah. in AMD. Cork seemed to bring a good travelling mm. crowd. Um, fantastic, like, and Galway <laughs> fans and John Caulfield and the Galway players were absolutely fuming. Keith, it was almost like the reverse of the game in, in Turner's Cross because Galway had a man sent off down there. Mm. And they won the game one nil. Cork had a man sent off in mm. AMD. Now, can I just say, and we spoke about this off air, looking back, I didn't actually see the incident first time, but then I re- rewound the video, and it's almost like the Galway player elbows Keating. Keating kind of pushes him a little bit. Now, it's it's no means a mad push, but he kind of pushed him off the ball. And I'll be honest, the the Galway bench seem to have a bit of an influence on the sending off because you can visibly see that they're actually going a little bit mad at the fact that he's failed mm. their player. But I feel, personally, I think the Galway player should have been sent off for... It looks like he throws an elbow. It looks like that. I have to say, it's hard to see, but I rewinded it like you four or five times. And I before we came on air, actually, I said, what did you think of that without saying anything? Because I thought the same thing. But uh, it looks like the Galway player does actually throw a bit of an elbow. And if he, if he doesn't quite do that, at the same time, I don't think Rory Keaton deserves to get sent off anyway. Because I'm not sure Keaton does much. He's been blocked off his run, first of all. It looks like the elbow's thrown a bit. And even if it, it's not as bad as that, Keaton doesn't do enough for me to get sent off anyway. He just kind of he doesn't even barely, puts his hand on him slightly. He doesn't even shove him, I would say. And um, it looks like a very hard, harsh red card to me. I'd be interested to see what people think in the comments, be it Galway or Cork, maybe who are at the game and got a good view of it. I'd love that. But for me, looking at that, what, irrespective of what we think, maybe the Galway player could have got sent off or not, I'm definitely 100% confident that Keating shouldn't have got sent off. And luckily, from Cork's point of view, it didn't cost them anything in the match. Yeah, they would have been fuming if it cost them mm. the match. I mean, like... And it was a straight red, Keith. It wasn't straight a red. yellow. Straight yeah. red card. Like, I mean, it was so strange. Yeah. And as the referee, I wonder, I'm just trying to play. As the right linesman, more so to the point, taught for some reason that Keating had elbowed him, maybe, I wonder, in a weird way. Like, that he didn't it looked, see it right in his head and thought that Keating had done the elbow or something. I don't know. It looks like the fourth official has made the decision as well. Because the mm. fourth official kind of ushers the referee over as well. Mm. And he's obviously in his ear. Like... For such a big game, you know, decisions like mm. that, mm. referees, if you're not sure or if someone else mm. isn't sure, you don't make the decision, you know, simple as that. Because um, you you think about it, if Galway had a, had a came back in that game and they went five points clear, if mm. is a big word, obviously. But if that had happened, Galway are kind of out in front and they're probably not going to be caught, let's be honest. And then Healy's under pressure because obviously with the budget he's been given this season, they want him to take the team up into the Premier Division. So, you know, and people have said it for weeks and weeks and weeks, the, the level of 
inconsistency with refereeing decisions in the league, it has to stop. It really does have to stop because um, something like that will cost a manager his job. And some some of these managers are full time as well, so um, it, it's not good. Uh, how do you call it though, Keith? How, how how can you call it now? We were all for Galway a few weeks ago. Now we're Cork, and, but that isn't that know. the great thing about it though, isn't it? And even when and even I'm keeping my eye on Waterford and thinking, Hang on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they could easily sneak up in the old race in terms of the blind side, you know. So it's yeah. great, fantastic. Because last year at Shelburne, who are really good side and just flying it like and. Uh, I think you've got three sides, actually, as we speak, who player-wise are capable of being Premier Division sides, as they are. Never mind what they might do if they got there into the Premier. So it's a fantastic yeah. thing to see, and possibly two of the teams are going to be bitterly disappointed. Definitely one of them, for sure, yeah. because only two max can go up. So it's really interesting, but just before we finish, like this is a massive feather in Colin Healy's cap to go to Galway, particularly in the form Galway are in, and a few little bumpy results like the 2-1 win against Athlone for example was bumpy for Cork and the draw against Wexford so with all that it's a massive feather in Healy's cap to go to Galway and beat Caulfield uh, you could argue at his own game in many ways yeah, yeah. What, I, what I liked Keith was um, after Matt Healy scored the, to get the togetherness of the team over celebrating with the bench Healy involved so there's obviously a bit of um, a bit of I'm going to repeat myself togetherness within that mm. squad so um, and you're right about like those teams they, they probably could it'd be interesting when the FAI Cup comes around if they if they do draw a division side whether they'll actually take right. um, a banana skin there you know what I mean um, I'm because... telling you right now Pats were drawn against Galway or Cork home or away I, I, I'd be concerned you know in that kind of way so that shows I don't think Pats would be the only team to be concerned but it would not be an easy draw, even if you're Shamrock Rovers. If you had to go to Eamon DC Park or yeah. Turner's Cross now, you'd be thinking, God, like this is, you know, we have to be on it here. Like, so it's great to see that though. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And uh, they'd, they'd really be good additions to the Premier Division, mm. Galway and and Waterford. Like, let's not, let's not leave them out because um, it's, it's such a pity the, the Premier Division's 10 teams, like, because those three teams would be really good additions, you know, and, mm. um, and fan-wise would be great additions as well, wouldn't they, fan-base-wise, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. you, you obviously you spread it around the country, you know. Mm-hmm. At the moment, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a Dublin... East Coast. Li- <laughs> yeah, mm. apart from Sligo, got, or Sligo, Derry, and Chinars, but... Um, Anyway, mm. you talked about the Premier Division last night, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it there. Look, we'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss the video. Thanks again, Keith. Brilliant. Cheers, man.